A lot of football yesterday over the weekend as well. And this is when we start to take out the shovel and we start to throw some dirt on some teams. Dirt on the Bengals? Question mark? Probably. Dirt on the Jets? Yes. Dirt on the Jags? Yes. Dirt on the Cowboys? Question mark? But the Eagles handled the Bengals, the Browns over the Ravens, cards over the Finns, uh, the Packers get by the Jags, commanders in dramatic fashion, bears at the buzzer, and then the Niners last night beating up on the Cowboys. Let me start there, and then I'll work my way back. But watching the Cowboys... And it felt like they made a late comeback. You got some garbage time numbers for Dak Prescott. That's a team that is just out of sync. You're watching and you keep waiting. What do they do well? C.D. Lamb is great. But Dak, very inconsistent. Turnovers once again. Defense is spotty. Guys are chirping at each other. You got a lame duck coach. And you got an owner who's in a hurry to win a championship. And it's not going to happen anytime soon. As for the Niners, that's one of those, okay, we got it. Maybe not perfect. Purdy didn't look that good. Uh, You got another good running back there. Uh, George Kittle. George Kittle's one of those, oh, that's right, they got George Kittle. Because he's still very elusive, that he can make some plays there. But that's one of those, you got the win, you move on. We tend to get caught up in style points. How did you look? Sometimes you just go, we won. You're four and four. We won. That's it. And then you look around, Seattle gets blown out at home by Buffalo, which was a really impressive performance. Got to watch a lot of that, and I'm going, man, Seattle's a good team. Buffalo has played really well. They've exceeded expectations because the expectations prior to this were too high. Now it feels like they might be too low because the Dolphins – they may get to the point, if you're out of the playoff hunt, do you sit to a tongue of Ioloa? That's what I'm curious about here. Do you get to the point of no return of why are we putting him out there? And they might be getting close to that. But the new and improved Patriots no longer soft. They end up beating the Jets. The Jets are going into darkness, apparently. And Aaron Rodgers, who has blamed just about everybody for uh, how bad they've been. I don't know if he blames the media for this loss. I think we got the blame for the last loss. But, you know, we're getting to the point where I'm going, oh, the Patriots won, okay, with a backup quarterback who just got benched so you could put in Drake May, who got knocked out of the game. And then you go, yeah, sure. Like, now I'm not surprised. Before, I was like, you got to beat Denver at home. Or you have a chance to win that game. you got to win that game. You have a quarterback who he's supposed to be the difference. You won seven games last year with horrible quarterbacking play. Don't you think that quarterback could be responsible for at least two more wins? Because that's what great quarterbacks do. I'm watching the Chiefs against the Raiders. And Mahomes, gone are the days of 50 touchdown passes, 40 touchdown passes. But man, oh man, can he, he can run a game. And I know there are quarterbacks, Alex Smith in particular, who would always get upset when I called him a game manager. I meant it as a compliment. There's a lot of guys who can throw the ball. It's like being a thrower and a pitcher. I want a pitcher. I want somebody who manages a game. And Mahomes was managing that game. He would take what, you know, it used to be you're trying to force it a little bit. Now he's like, all right, what do you want to give me? All right, I'll take that. Then I'll take a little bit more. A little bit more. Defense played great. Now, granted, it is the Raiders, but this is a rivalry game, and I expected this to be close, but still undefeated. You may not be impressed by them. The Lions are the team. They are the newest version, 2.0, of greatest show on turf. They're cruising. You put up 58 points. I know it's against Tennessee. It's still the NFL putting up 58. Now, granted, that might be 38 against somebody else, but... (laughs) You still put up 58 points and looked impressive. And Jared Goff, I know people go kicking and screaming and saying, MVP? I can't argue with the numbers here. Now, he didn't have to put up, you know, big numbers first half. They scored touchdowns, didn't throw for a lot of yards. But you start to look at 
some of these numbers in what he's done over a four-game stretch. So he has completed 83% of his passes over the past five games. That is the best five-game percentage for a quarterback in NFL history. Lions scored 52, my bad. They would have scored another touchdown. Uh, But Jared Goff has completed 83% of his passes over the uh, past five games. That tops Peyton Manning's all-time record that was set back in 2008. They don't have Jamison Williams for another game, as he's been suspended uh, two games. But back to uh, the Bears against the Commanders, the showdown, the top two quarterbacks. And it wasn't a good game. It was a great finish, but it wasn't a good game. The Bears' defense is good. They they did a great job against Jaden Daniels. You know, they're really good except for on Hail Mary passes. <laughs> Hail Maryland passes. They uh, they gave up the Hail Mary at the end. And uh, boy, I had a lot of I had a lot of thoughts about this because it's one of my pet peeves when you see defensive backs trying to go for the interception or not knocking the ball to the ground. And then you got a defensive back who's not even part of the play to start with. He is, you know, John with the fans. Tyreek Stevenson. He's there, John. They snap the ball, and he's like, oh, okay, I'll go over there. Now, in fairness, he did get his hand on the ball. I would have fired Matt Eberflus because there were two things that happened there. The previous play, and Tony Romo did a wonderful job. Romo said, you know what I would do, Jim? I would do a 10, 12, 13-yard out, and then that sets up the Hail Mary. Because you can't throw it 70 yards, certainly with Jaden Daniels and his ribs. I don't know why you're not having a little bit, not press coverage, but you're at least up there to make it a little bit more, force them to make that throw inside. And then time's going to run out. Plus, you have three timeouts. After they complete the pass... To, uh, who was that, uh, uh, McLaurin. Then you call a timeout. How about we, let's regroup here. Call a second timeout if you want to. I never understood this. If I have my guys back, everybody's at the goal line. The only way you can beat me is if you get into the end zone. Okay. First of all, I don't have a spy on the quarterback. They had a linebacker who was a spy. Jane Daniels isn't going to run it 55 yards. <laughs> You got a spy on him. How about he rushes the quarterback? Not spies. Second of all, I would say, who is the guy who has the best vertical? I'd have the guys who have the best vertical, and I'd probably have maybe our tallest guy. Can I have somebody back there? Cole Komet, who's 6'5". Like, I need to have some height, and you got to be able to box out. You can't have somebody behind the defense can't and he's the guy in the end zone inexcusable embarrassing with the emphasis on b-e-a-r here is matt eberflus the head coach on the loss just got out of the locker room Um, obviously the guys are disappointed you know when you lose a game like that you know that's a tough one to swallow um, after coming back but uh, also told them in the same you know same conversation that was really excited that, uh, you know, the, how they battled back, you know, and they battled back to win that game, uh, you know, to be able to have a chance to win that game. So, you know, it's important to look at that too. No, 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 not going to look at that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But this is how the Bears announcers called the Hail Maryland. Jaden Daniels sifting back, oh. being pressured. Jaden Daniels hemmed into the pocket, looking for blockers, launches deep pass into the area of the oh, end zone. It. And it's caught by Noah Brown. He was the tip man, and this place is now gone into bedlam mode. Washington with the miracle finish. Four plays, 76 yards, and 25 stinking seconds. Unreal. That's the Bears' call. Here's the Commander's call. Four at the goal line. They bring three. Daniels backing up, gives himself some time. Now steps up, fires, heads towards the end zone. It is. How 
many people are in the booth? It sounded like a frat house. The producer got in on it. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah. Those I, laughs were so sinister, too. Like, I don't know what was happening in the lead up to the game, but the. <laughs> How about we try to replicate uh, that? Jaden Daniels back to pass down to the goal line. Uh, it's it's good. Good. I'm watching. I text the Danettes, and I just said embarrassing. It should never happen. And I don't want to hear this. Oh, how many holding calls? If it comes down (laughs) to Hail Mary, and you're going to say, what about the holding call? No. Move on. Move on. And there probably were. There were probably pushing and shoving and holding in the end zone as well on the Hail Mary. You're four and two. You got a chance to be five and two. If you don't make the playoffs, you're going to look back on this game. You had a chance. You stayed in the game. Caleb Williams did a nice job at the end of the game. You scored the touchdown. They don't have any timeouts. All you have to do is keep the runner in in the field of play. Don't give him the sidelines. He's not throwing at 70 yards. He's not capable of doing that. Tony Romo even said, you know what? They might have to bring in Marcus Mariota. Because Jaden Daniels is playing with bruised ribs. That's one of those where you look at the coach and you go, what are you doing? Call timeout. Settle your team. Let's make sure we got the right people in. We know exactly what we're doing. And don't engage with the crowd. Hey, guys, here's some things we need to worry about. Knock the ball down. Hey, do not engage with the crowd and, you know, egg them on and, you know, whatever. Don't start celebrating early. Oh, my goodness. That's why the NFL is undefeated. It's just every week never, never fails. I'm watching the Ravens-Browns, and I said, I think Thursday or Friday, the Browns are going to win a game they're not supposed to win. And maybe that's the game. But it also made me think again. Like, I want to be all in on the Ravens and say, okay, this is sustainable. And, and it's not Lamar's fault because, you know, Lamar had a couple of plays that, where his teammates let him down. Uh, his, you know, they, they should have had an interception prior to the game-winning touchdown. But Jameis Winston is a better quarterback for Cleveland than Deshaun Watson. And Joe Flacco was a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson. Because if I start to look at the numbers here, you know, Deshaun Watson hasn't thrown for over 300 yards since he's been in Cleveland. But Joe Flacco, I think, had five of those games. And I think, you know, Jameis Winston had one yesterday. Like, this is a guy who shouldn't be the starting quarterback, you know, going forward. Now, I know he's out for the rest of the year. And I'm not saying Jameis Winston is the answer there. But I don't think we've ever doubted his talent. I just, I doubt his consistency. Now, he's not the quarterback I want, but he does have the ability to make throws. And he's a risk taker. And sometimes that benefits him, and sometimes it benefits the defense. And they could have easily lost that because he overthrew a wide receiver. But they did win. They feel like they're more aggressive. And that's what you need to do. This team went to the playoffs last year. The difference is... Deshaun Watson over Jameis Winston or Joe Flacco. But you're still stuck with that contract there. But you're watching that game and you're going, can I count on the Ravens? Are they going to have one of these games in the postseason? Our good buddy Ross Tucker was on the call. He'll join us coming up next hour. As for uh, the Jets, here's Aaron Rodgers uh, after the loss to the Patriots. Yeah, I've been in the darkness. you got to go in there, make peace with it. Offensively, our goal has just got to be score 30. Doesn't matter what the other two sides are doing. You know, we have trust in our defense and teams. But if we're not scoring 30, we're underachieving. This offense can do that every single week. Okay. You got to make peace with the darkness. You know, I I don't need a haiku here, brother. How about, I mean, how about we just go out and play? How about we just connect a couple more passes? Yeah. yeah. Move the chains a little bit. How about a conversion or two? 
Uh, if we need to confront the darkness more than we meet, need to move the chains, just a little. I don't need Doctor Phil. <laughs> And we got to start doing something better than we be doing. You got this whole big aquarium, you ain't got no fish in there. <laughs> we be doing. <laughs> we we got to make peace with the darkness. I've been in there before. I've tackled yeah. it myself. You know what? How about you make peace with the end zone? <laughs> how, about you, how about we do something like that? Make peace with a couple dubs. Oh, my God. <laughs> You, you got a rookie quarterback who gets hurt. The backup quarterback comes in. They're missing offensive, defensive line. They, they have no skilled position play. The whole week leading up to it was, are the Patriots soft? Yes. <laughs> if so, what's that make the Jets? Golly. That is... Don't you wonder what Devontae Adams is thinking? <laughs> no, I should have stayed with the Raiders. I mean... <laughs> I think we have a better chance to win with the Raiders. <sighs> yes, Marvin. Friday's headline, Hello Darkness, My Old Friend. Oh, okay. Because after they lose to the Texans, they play Thursday night. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> on Halloween. We'll get Simon and Garfunkel on. Paul Simon. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yes, Paul. If you go back with the Jets, though, if they get that Broncos game where they don't score a touchdown and they get yesterday's game that they should have had, what are you? You're 4-4. You're four and four. And you've got games against like the Colts coming up or the Seahawks and the Dolphins and the Jaguars. You could sneak in somewhere, but they just dug themselves the biggest hole. Yeah, I'm watching a little bit of the Colts game. I did turn it off. Um, and I turned it off because I felt bad for Anthony Richardson. He shouldn't have been out there. Now, I, I feel bad for the Colts, too. But Anthony Richardson has probably too much talent. And I don't know if he knows how to play the position. You know, when you're 10 for 32, I think he was 2 for 16 at one point. And, and I know he, he pulled himself out of the lineup. He said he was tired. Lie. Lie. Just say, hey, uh, something was wrong with my helmet. Don't say I was tired. When you think about it, of all the players, now, during the week, the quarterback works harder than any other players because he has to have the game plan. And, you know, it's mental. When you play the game, the hardest positions are everybody else. When you think about it, linemen bang each other every play. Running backs, wide receiver, everybody gets hit, they're running. Quarterback may just dump a pass off, he may hand off. He's getting tired. Not a good sign. And it was two for 16, and I thought, you know what? There has to be a mercy rule for bad quarterback play, and you need to take him out. But they could have won the game. <laughs> Flacco probably would have won the game for him. <laughs> it's wild. But it's that position where we're, you're still trying to figure out who can play it and who can't. And you got the, you know, Caleb Williams didn't look good, but he looked good when he needed to very at the very end. Jaden Daniels playing hurt, game time decision. He's become an MVP candidate. And, and that's not necessarily the numbers, but he, he makes them feel different. Dan Quinn's done a really good job. But this is different because Jaden Daniels makes them different. And if he didn't play, they don't win. But there is that, hey, they still have a chance, and he proved that yesterday. Yes, Eaton. That's part of the problem, though, with the Bears is that they have some good moments, but generally they they make a lot of mistakes, it seems like, you know? And that, I mean, that feels like a coaching issue. Why are we why are we handing the ball to an offensive lineman at the goal line? Uh, uh, like, why, 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 do, we don't need to. We why, don't. Why do, why get all cute? Don't need why, to. Why get so cute when you don't need to? Oh, my God. 